In Australia right now, there is a very specific rapid evolutionary process that's taking place where toxic toads have become cannibalistic and are eating their own young. These toads have not been this way and why they have become so is something to be evolutionarily understood by looking at where their species came from and how they evolved on Australia. Turns out they are now doing this to survive. The frogs are now controlling their own population for available resources. And what is happening here is evolution being played out in real time at an extremely fast pace for all of us to observe. In this video, we'll look at what is happening to the famous or rather infamous cane toads of Australia and how this evokes memories of a famous experiment which we've talked about before, which also proved that evolution does not need millions or thousands or even hundreds of years to occur. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, Australia was growing a lot of sugarcane. This was just after a massive land reform, a huge economic depression and Australia just having been proclaimed a commonwealth. This was still very much colonial times, so who would work the plantations and fields? It was a bit hard to bring indentured and African slave labor to Australia, so it was instead the Pacific Islanders, the native peoples who occupied the smaller islands just around Australia. These people were brought in onto the mainland continent for indentured labor. This process eventually ended and mechanization began in these fields slowly. But then through the 20s and 30s, sugarcane plantations started to get extremely affected by the growing cane beetle population which was feeding on the crop. There simply wasn't enough labour personnel to fix this problem. So Queensland farmers thought of introducing a biocontrol measure using a natural predator. So they introduced a non-native species to the secluded ecosystem of the Australian island and this would act as a natural predator and eat up all the beetles that were eating the sugar cane. This animal was of course the poisonous cane toad, which is native to South America. It was introduced as a biocontrol agent to Australia in 1935. As most non-native species do, it found an abundance of resources to thrive upon and it became invasive, rapidly spreading across the entire continent. Female toads can produce over 10,000 eggs in one clutch or in one go, and they all hatch in just a few days in the water. Adult toads can weigh up to over a kilo per individual. Of course, these toads naturally over multiplied and became a pest, and in fact became a much bigger pest than the cane beetles now because, well, they're poisonous. There's this quite a funny 45 minute educational short film called Cane Toads and Unnatural History, which was made in 1988. It is often used in schools in Australia to help children understand the invasive pest problem with the cane toads. This film is considered to be a cult classic and it's available on YouTube. There will be a link in the description below for those interested in seeing it. I would highly recommend it. It's both extremely informative and extremely hilarious. So as these cane toads came over to Australia in 1935 and started multiplying over the subsequent years and decades, they spread rapidly and now they are in competition with only each other for resources. There are that many cane toads in number. The skin of an adult cane toad is poisonous and humans who have consumed these toads have died. Other animals die too and now scientists are in fact conditioning and training native animals to not eat toads using Pavlovian conditioning experiments. But for decades, scientists and biologists have been observing that the toads are turning increasingly cannibalistic. And this is not seen in these toads in their native habitat in South America. This behavior is unique to Australia and it is being observed surprisingly in tadpoles which haven't even made it out of the water yet after hatching. Young tadpoles seem to kill hatching toad eggs of their own kind and eat them along with other frog eggs. 
Scientists have managed to narrow down the cause for this drive to kill corn specifically or your own species for consumption and they understood that it is being triggered by the production of the very toxin that makes these toads poisonous in the first place. With experiments, biologists were able to understand that the tadpoles turned cannibalistic only when exposed to the toxin which is found in cane toad eggs and is the same one that is found on the skin of adult toads. When these eggs are simply in the water, unhatched, the tadpoles are not triggered to devour them and are not attracted to them. But when they hatch, the toxin gets released into the water and comes in contact with the tadpoles who suddenly realize that there is a feast sitting right in front of them. They feed on their own species eggs and the eggs of other wild frogs. In experiments, scientists were also able to confirm that when the tadpoles are not exposed to the toxin, they do not devour eggs. So why would something evolve to kill its own? The only explanation is reduction in population. Tadpoles in Australia compete strongly with each other and they are extremely dense when it comes to numbers spread across an area. So now they have to bring down their numbers to be able to survive. It's an evolutionary response that's being forced by the confines and constraints of their environment and how much they can outcompete and grow and survive among each other. They are at a constant lifelong battle for resources with other members of their own species that are very close by geographically. So this is the only evolutionary way out. In less than 100 years, the toads have evolved a completely new form of behavior and feeding habit, which in fact results in harm to their own species. And this is occurring as a form of rapid evolution. When we think of evolution, we think of it taking place over millions of years, but we know that it can be quite fast. We've discussed before the famous Belyayev fox experiment in Siberia. This was conducted in the 1950s and the most docile wild silver foxes were selected for breeding with each other. And this selection continued with subsequent generations. Within just a few years, the foxes began to show extreme levels of docile behavior. They also started to have physical changes. They developed more bushy tails and started to wag them. They started to have floppy ears. Their coats became spotted. They had softer fur. They stopped being afraid of humans and started to develop a lot of curiosity. And all in all, just basically started to behave a lot like domestic dogs. The scientists even walked them around on leashes as a lot of the pictures show. All of this happened in just a few decades within just a few generations of foxes and it was our first detailed insight into how rapid evolution can actually be. Belyayev is now credited with giving a wealth of knowledge and understanding of dog evolution and domestication. What's happening with cane toads today in Australia is similar. It is yet more evidence that evolution can occur quite rapidly and life does indeed find a way.